so good evening students uh, welcome to the 2021 jrf paper discussion i hope that i am audible right so um, all right so the screen uh, is also visible so the first uh, question is a statement type of question where it states that plastids are sites of purine synthesis and the cytosol is considered as a site of pyrimidine synthesis which is uh, nothing but we know purines such as uh, adenine and then the guanine right these two these two are not only synthesis in the plastids but uh, their synthesis can also be seen in your mitochondria right so please uh, have a note that purines are not only synthesized in plastids but these can also be synthesized in the mitochondria uh, with this we can say that the statement one is true but the additional information is purine synthesis also takes place in the mitochondria whereas the pyrimidine synthesis uh, such as your uh, cytosine followed by thymine and uracil these can be synthesized in the cytoplasm so both the statements are true but the additional information is purines can also be synthesized in the mitochondria right so both the statements are true and this uh, the first option will be your correct option in second question we all can see this is uh, just a matching type of question and the list one is given that it is an trait or a human disease whereas list two so when does it occur in the time period so we all know this based on these things uh, baldness baldness as we see it uh, comes after 22 25 years to life it takes some time to appear so we can uh, simply say that baldness so it takes about a uh, uh, few years to appear but in case of blood groups as soon as the uh, male and then the female gamete gets mixed to form the zygote uh, then only we can say that uh, the blood group is been determined so blood group is determined before the birth okay baldness it is after uh, 22 to 15 years all right is it okay right is it okay guys so blood groups because uh, immediately after the fusion of male and female gamete based on the alleles we can predict the blood group of a child that is even before his birth but in case of baldness it is not the situation right so we need to uh, wait for few years uh, like 20 to 25 years in order to see this whereas in case of alkaptonuria it can be an inborn error of metabolism so immediately after the birth we can uh, see the expression of alkaptonuria and then rickets it generally uh, can be seen like 1 to 2 years after the birth right so based on this you can uh, match the options so the discovery and then the scientists we all know that the human blood groups that is your abo was discovered by karl landsteiner in 1900 right and double helical model of dna by crick watson and wilkins in 1953 so the genetic improvement of the mexican maize was done by norman e borlak considered as the father of our green revolution and uh, mobile genetic elements in maize uh, by barbara mcclintock so what is the other name to the mobile genetic elements can anyone write in the chat box what is the other name for mobile genetic elements anyone what do we call them jumping genes what do you mean by t someone wrote t What is T? Someone wrote, "Yeah, these are okay transposable elements, right?" So jumping genes are also known as uh, transposable elements. And it was discovered by M. C. Clintock in uh, Maze, McClintock. And next is your population genetics question. So it is given that in a population of hundred individuals. Which is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, 
the number of individuals of different uh, phenotypic classes are as follows. So based on this, he is uh, asking to find out the frequency of capital A and small a, which uh, represents your gene frequency, right? So the formula for gene frequency is, so if you want to know the frequency of capital A, allele, you need to see they uh, are there. So there are 64 individuals with dominant homozygous condition of capital A. So that is 64 into 2 plus whereas it, capital A is also seen in case of your heterozygote. So it will be only uh, 1. So it is your 32 which is divided by 2 into total number. Right. So where it is equal to so 64 into 32 64 into 2 plus 32 by 200 you will get an value of this right so based upon this you can just mark as uh, a is 0 0.8 and then the alternate allele or the alternate uh, gene frequency will be 0 0.8 so this is how you need to calculate the gene frequencies. So can anyone answer this question that in an, any genetic analysis, the effect of tight linkage may create confusion with which of the following events? Following uh, uh, phenomena can create a confusion with the linkage. Anyone? So we know that linkage means so when two or more genes, they travel together, right? Yeah, it is your pleiotropy. So pleiotropy, how we can define pleiotropy? Pleiotropy is a condition where a single gene affects more than two characters or trait, right? So this is your pleiotropic condition. Eventually, this question was dropped, but you need to know uh, what are the definition to all these uh, um, phenomena. So pseudo allele, it is the non-functional copy of a normal allele and pleiotropy, a single gene controlling more than one trait. Whereas in case of penetrance, it is the uh, frequency of individuals which expresses a particular phenotype, right? And epistasis is your non-allelic interaction, right? Gene interaction where uh, the genes get interacted. This is the thing. And the next question is the most common secondary structure of protein molecule. So we all know that there are two most common uh, secondary structures of protein molecules. One is your alpha helix followed by the beta pleated structures. Okay. Among these two, alpha helix is the most common structure. And then uh, the next question in which uh, there is a given statement that in Watson and Crick model of DNA, each turn of the helix is the length of 10 base pairs. So we all know that when they decipher the uh, molecular structure of DNA, so this is nothing but said to be your turn, right? So where you can harbor 10 base pairs. So we can say that this is a true statement. But the second statement it uh, is each complete turn of the double stranded DNA helix is 3.4 long, 3.4 angstroms long. So it is being stated that it is only 3.4 angstroms long, but it is actually 34 angstroms. Okay. But if you see the distance between two um, base pairs, it is 3.4 angstroms. If you multiply it by 10, we will get 34 angstroms. So A is correct and R is wrong. And in order to solve this question, you need to know the uh, Nagaharu triangle. I hope you know that uh, U triangle proposed by Nagaharu, where we will be having Brassica nigra, followed by Brassica valeracea and Brassica campestris, right? So, whereas in case of this, 8, 9, and 10 are the haploid chromosome numbers, followed by it has an A genome. B genome and then the C genome. So, and the progeny will be look here, you will be having Napus 
and then here uh, it is carinata and then juncia at this side right so it is the statement is brassica juncia is an allotetraploid having a a and b b genome so you can say that okay a and b has clubbed to form juncia so this is a right statement and brassica juncia is produced when brassica nigra is crossed to brassica campestris right so brassica nigra when crossed with brassica campestris it produces your juncia so we can say that uh, both are correct and it is a correct explanation that is the reason why you have an allotetraploid genome of capital a capital n capital b capital b right is it okay you can just write in the chat box have any um, doubts or queries right so you need to know not only the um, how uh, juncia is formed you also need to know how the triticum eastium is formed how uh, gossybium uh, hirsutum is formed right so you need to know uh, as well as in case of tobacco so there are many evolutionary uh, crosses so you, you need to know all these things and then the concept of chromosomal non disjunction it was uh, proposed by a scientist named bridges while he was working with drosophila okay these are direct questions you need not to um, give a wrong statement you should need to be very particular but right? these are type of a scoring questions um, so it is in the next question it is stated that in a c urchin dna which is a double stranded dna 10% of the bases are shown to be cytosine so here it is stating that 10% uh, of the bases are cytosine right based upon this observation they have given some assumption so let us consider this we all know that um, cytosine should be equal to guanine right so with 10% of cytosine we also need to have only 10% of guanine right so if c plus g is is equals to 20% then the remaining 80% should be your adenine pairing with thymine so in this case 40% if we divide it should be your adenine and then 40% should be your thymine so this is our basic understanding so if we go with this you can say that guanine or 10% this is a right statement and adenine or 40% this is also right statement but thymine or 20% it's a wrong thing and then purines so purines it comprises of your adenine and guanine so 40 plus 10 it is 50 so we can say that purines are 50 and purines and pyrimidines are equal so g plus a is 50 so c plus t even t we said that it is 40% so c plus t is also 50 that is your 10 plus 40 so except c everything are right okay And the next uh, thing is uh, relating to your cell theory concept. So Scleden and Swan proposed the first two components of the cell theory. So I hope you read this, right? So the first two statements were proposed by Scleden and Swan. And then uh, a third scientist named Rudolf Picro, he proposed the third component of this cell theory. What does the third component states? Can anyone write in chat box? What did Rudolf Picro um, stated that been added to cell theory or you can unmute and you can answer let rudolf picro he said that cells originate from the pre-existing cells right this is also known as the cell lineage theory okay so both the statements which are given here are true both are true And then coming to the next question. So which of the following statements are true while comparing prokaryotes and eukaryotes? So we can say that prokaryotes have 70s ribosomes and eukaryotes have 80s ribosomes. So this is a true statement to make. Nuclear material is linear in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. No, this is a wrong statement, right? In case of uh, prokaryotes, you can find the circular type of uh, nuclear material. And meiosis is a characteristic of eukaryotes. Yes. 
genetic exchange occurs in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes whatever might be the organism without genetic exchange there is no variation or uh, your progeny get form so genetic exchange it occurs in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes and the nuclear membrane is present in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes this is the wrong statement the reason is that um, prokaryotes they do not have the nuclear material this is the reason why uh, the prokaryotes and eukaryotes have been classified right so based upon these options only a c and then d are the correct statements and then coming to q banding experiments so whenever you use q banding and uh, after that if you apply the light fluorescence you can uh, see the rich base pairs of guanine and cytosine okay please remember this in case of q banding you can uh, uh, visualize the uh, chromosomal regions which are rich in guanine and cytosine which of the following is a form of exitive conservation so we all know that exitive conservation means we are conserving the material away from the natural place right so these examples include gene banks so we are taking them out and then we are conserving in some other places and tissue culture repositories or laboratories right and then even botanical gardens whereas the national parks and biosphere reserves they come under the in situ type of conservation mechanisms right and which of the following cell organelle does not contain dna so we all know that in case of eukaryotic cells nucleus is the one which contains the uh, main um, dna part and then the chloroplast as well as mitochondria also have the dna right so the chloroplast dna can anyone say who uh, identified the chloroplast dna who were the researchers or the scientists who identified the chloroplast dna as well as mitochondrial dna yeah it was a recent plot in case of chloroplast dna and uh, in case of mitochondrial dna who identified mitochondrial dna so the mitochondrial dna was identified by nas and his co-workers okay so with uh, this we can say that mitochondria has the dna chloroplast has the dna nucleus has the dna the only organal which is lacking the dna in this option is your lysosome so the next question states that the horn development in the sheep is a suitable example of which of the following events so remember that the uh, horn development in sheep or baldness in case of humans these are the sex influenced traits okay so these are the sex influenced traits whereas in case of your sex linked traits you can um, cite the examples of uh, lactating mothers and mammary gland development in humans mostly females right and beard development in the male humans so these are under your sex linked traits whereas sex influenced traits it includes the horn characters in sheep right and then the baldness character in males etc these are sex influenced traits so what do you what do you mean by holantic traits there is an another term named holantic trait right so holantic traits are nothing but uh, the traits which are governed by the genes located on the y chromosome okay so one such example to this holantic trait is hypertrichosis that is excessive growth of hairs in the ear okay so this is uh, an uh, important example please remember holantric traits and coming to the next question the central dogma of molecular biology we all know that it was proposed by francis crick and then the chromosomal theory of inheritance by sutton and bovary and then double uh, helical dna structure by crick watson and wilkins and one gene one enzyme hypothesis it was given by beadley and totter so 
in which organism was this one gene one enzyme hypothesis was uh, performed anyone in which organism this one gene and one enzyme hypothesis was uh, performed any idea yeah it was performed in neurospora so what it is either it is in bacteria or fungi or virus what is neurospora uh, neurospora is a fungi okay so it was performed in the fungi the fungi name is your neurospora please do remember this and the colchicine so colchicine uh, we know that it is an uh, chromosomal doubling agent it is primarily obtained from which part of the plant so these are mainly obtained from the seeds okay and from the corn and you also need to know the um, chemical formula of colchicine do anyone know the chemical formula of colchicine it is important the chemical formula of colchicine colchicine is obtained from colchicium artuminale mostly from the seeds and corn and what is the chemical formula of the colchicine so the chemical formula of colchicine is c22 h25 o6 and then n okay so this is the chemical formula of colchicine please to remember the chemical formula of colchicine there might be a question in your jrf that what is the chemical formula of the colchicine and coming to next uh, question so it is stated that the light dependent reactions that is nothing but your light reactions occur in stroma in the presence of light so we all know that light reactions they occur in the presence of light but not in the stroma right so the statement one is wrong and statement two states that the light independent reactions which is our dark reactions they occur in thylakoid in absence of light yeah they occur in the absence of light and they are known as dark reactions but they do not occur in the thylakoid so dark reactions that takes place in the stroma whereas your light reactions that takes place in the thylakoid it has interchange so both the statements are wrong here right and then arranging the following organelles starting from the center to the periphery of the cell so the center starts your nucleolus right so if we see uh, the nucleus will be having nucleolus then the rough endoplasmic reticulum you can see then followed by the golgi apparatus sometimes and then the plasma membrane and at last you can have the cell wall right so nucleolus rough endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus plasma membrane and then the cell wall because it is been arranged from the center center to the periphery from the center to outside uh, so which of the following or not the chain initiation codons so we all know that the chain initiation codon is a u g which codes for so which amino acid does a u g code for methionine right so a u g it codes for methionine and there are some organisms where chain initiation codon is g u g okay there is some exception uh, so the, this is an exception but uh, aug is universal uh, in most of the organisms but gug can also act right so based on this you can say that these are initiating codons but when you see the top three codons these uaa uag and uga so what are these what are these uh, uh, codons known as this uaa uag and uga so are they uh, the initiating codons yeah uh, these are your stop codons right they stop the process of your translation 
so uh, okay these are stop codons but these also have some particular names given to them so can anyone tell the names what are the names given to them this is very important these might be the question uh, in matching or uh, something okay so the names are we all know that uaa it is nothing but your archi and uga is your amber and uh, no uag is your amber and uga is your opal right so please to be um, well versed with uh, these names and then coming to next question uh, expansion of a uh, itpgfra so please pay attention it expands to international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture okay so the correct option is this international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture right please be uh, pay attention international treaty on plant genetic resources it is not plant genomics it is plant genetic resources for food and agriculture and then uh, the next it states that on an average how many fragments would a restriction enzyme which recognizes a phi base sequence in dna so which is nothing but said to be your penta cutter right so for every phi base space it has the ability to cut the dna so if we use this uh, uh, restriction enzyme which recognizes a phi base sequence in dna would so how many uh, fragments would it produce from a double stranded bacteriophage which has a genome size of nearly 5 kb uh, it is your 5.2 right 5.2 bases uh, exactly 5252 bases as it was mentioned so in order to solve these type of questions we need to divide the genome size of the given organism by so for every 5 bases you can uh, have this penta cutta cutting right so only there are four nucleotides raised to the power of 5 okay so if you use this formula this is the uh, normal formula that everyone uses to uh, know how many fragments can a uh, penta cutter generate okay so based on this uh, formula if you use you will be uh, knowing that around you can generate five fragments okay did you understand this how to solve this so it is uh, if you want to know the number of fragments you need to divide the genome size by 4 to the power of the recognition how many bases does it recognize okay if it is an tetra cutter it is 4 to the power of 4 if it is an hexa cutter 4 to the power of 6 okay So, if you encounter uh, such type of questions, you need to solve in the way that genome size divided by four to the power of n, where n is how many base sequence that your uh, restriction enzyme recognizes. Based on this, okay, you need to solve these type of questions. And then we all know that the main product of the photosynthesis is our glucose. and the energy carrying molecule uh, that is uh, seen in the cell is your atp so organisms that make their own food are known as autotrophs right auto is nothing but by their self and the organelle that is uh, participating in photosynthesis is your chloroplast so the next question is this we all know that uh, an germplasm is the sum total of genes of a species right and then biodiversity hotspot it is an region where we have more and more biodiversity okay that is your bio geographic region with higher biodiversity and then herbarium so collection of the dried leaf specimen on a paper right and then botanical garden with the trees and shrubs is your arbor so these are very simple questions you need not to uh, make any mistakes in this 
if you don't know like uh, in case of matching you can go through elimination method by uh, choosing the options right but you need not to make any mistake here next we all know that hugo de viris was a scientist who was uh, studying mutation right he was a scientist who coined the term mutation and fleming coined the term mitosis and uh, it's actually not stem it is your stern c stern so stern was a scientist who proved the cytological basis of crossing over in drosophila and then stahl and then his group they were uh, proving the semi conservative mode of dna replication right they proved the dna uh, replication happens in the semi conservative manner so do anyone know uh, which gradient did they use in the process to prove that dna replicates in semi conservative manner what is the gradient that uh, this group has used it's here cscl2 that is nothing but cesium chloride right so cesium chloride is a gradient they used to perform the experiment uh, so we all know that rice is our diploid plant right and then banana what is the ploidy condition of banana anyone diploidy condition of our banana banana is your triploid okay and then bread wheat so bread wheat is your 6n and then durum wheat is your tetraploid right uh you yeah, uh, do have a good attention to this question okay so cis and trans test which is also known as complementation test okay so if you perform this test the results may be ambiguous which is uh, nothing but we can't uh, uh, say it is universal it is right so there may be confusion the ambiguous term is nothing synonym to confusion so if we perform this test the result might create confusion if okay so if the mutations are dominant yes when the mutation is dominant then the cis and trans test okay it creates confusion if there is an intragenic complementation even in this case the cis and trans test creates confusion okay and then when in there is a gene interaction it creates confusion nothing but your epistasis and even polar mutation even if there is any polar mutation condition it creates the confusion okay right and even if there is a mutation belonging to different genes with the different phenotype even in this condition it creates a confusion right so everything in these options whenever uh, there are these different types of phenomena affecting the complementation test results are not correct okay right so everything in the options are responsible for ambiguity in the complementation test you, you need to know all this okay so please to uh, remember that when the mutation is dominant and when there are polar mutation or when there is epistatic condition and when there is intragenic complementation or when there is a mutation that gives to different genotypes with different genes these will hamper your complementation test results so the events happening during the rna processing are so we all know that uh, immediately after forming the rna what we do we have an capping at the 5 prime end right and then no there is no proof reading right proof reading of the formed rna is not performed only the capping is performed first and then followed by splicing of introns and joining of exons is been generally seen right uh, and then deadenylation is a wrong statement to make right there is no deadenylation there is addition of the polyacetyl at the 3 prime end okay so if this is your um, normal gene uh, after forming the rna 
or your mRNA, your mature RNA, what we see is that in the process we can add the five prime cap. Whereas in case of this, you will remove the intron sections. Let us consider these two are intron sections. We will remove them, right? And then we will form the mRNA, and at last we'll be adding the poly A tail, right? So only your A, C, and E are considered to be the correct events. Okay, so this is a uh, good tricky type of question. Pay attention to this. Uh, if there is any developed transgenic plant or genetically modified organism in rice, so for which um, character or for which trait did we develop the GMO for rice? Do anyone have any idea? So for what purpose did we develop? Okay, for vitamin. For which vitamin? Yeah, it is for vitamin A. Okay. So it is for vitamin A. Uh, so in case of tobacco and tomato and then cotton. So we all know that for uh, cotton and then tomato. So let us consider cotton first. So for which uh, trait did we develop the uh, transgenic cotton or GMO cotton? Anyone? Bt. Okay, so the, it is actually an uh, GMO hybrid type of crop. Okay, Bt. So in case of tomato, what was uh, the GMO developed for tomato? Yeah, self life. It is a flower sour, right? Okay. So do anyone know the gene that is uh, behind this uh, GMO tomato flower sour? And the company which developed this GMO, that is your flower saver. What is the company that developed this flower saver GMO of tomato? Anyone? Okay, it is your Calgene company. Okay, it was uh, developed by Calgene company. Have a note on this. Right, then the gene is your polygalactourinase. Polygalactourinase, okay. And then tobacco, we all know that it is the first transgenic crop developed in the plants. Right? Okay. And the next matching is uh, based on your uh, bridges. What do you call that theory? It is your genic balance theory, right? So it is nothing but a X by a number of X chromosomes by a that is nothing but your autosomal mm -hmm. such. So based on this, we will be uh, determining the sexual phenotype. All right. So we all know that. 0.5 states that it is a male and one is your female if there is anything in between them we classify it as your intersex okay according to the genic balance theory proposed by Bridges. so anything between 0.5 and 1 is your intersex and below 0.5 is your super male and above one okay so below 0.5 and then above one is considered as your super female and super male right so based on this we can say one is your female 0.5 is your male 0.6 which is in between these two is your uh, it is actually intersex it is not sex index it is intersex so intersex and then 0.33 it indicates the super female And coming to the next statement, so I'll test you whether uh, I hope you are dealt with the operon concept, right? So based on that, operon model of gene regulation are applicable to prokaryotes only. So is the statement one right? Based on your understanding that uh, the operon model 
are applicable in case of prokaryotes only in case of prokaryotes yes because only the operand models are seen in case of prokaryotes and then eukaryotic dna containing the intervening pieces of dna so what do you call that uh, intervening pieces of dna we generally call them as introns right so introns are the one which are removed during the splicing process so both the statements are correct and this question you guys you try by yourself okay it's an probability and a good uh, cross type of question okay and uh, i'll discuss it in the next when i discuss 2022 paper so try yourself once and let me know the answers okay and the next question is most commonly used dna manipulation enzymes okay what are the enzymes that are used in dna manipulation so uh, i don't know whether you have read or not i'll just tell you if you want to manipulate the dna you need to have nucleases which are nothing but your restriction enzymes okay and then followed by the ligases that is the one which ligate the two dna and we also need to have the polymerases for our amplification etc these three are main enzymes okay most commonly used and main enzymes for dna manipulation nucleases ligases and polymerases right all can be used but these three are most mainly used so pre 1940 genes are considered to be like beads on string and not divisible right is this statement right before 1940 the genes were considered as a, a beads on string and they are not divisible is the statement right that uh, before 1940 the genes are like just uh, beads on the string and they are not divisible this statement is right okay and after 1940 or in 1940 oliver was a scientist who proved that genes are divisible okay so in order to prove them he used the example of losin gene i in case of drosophila so with the help of a uh, losin gene i okay lz we call it as lz losin gene i in drosophila he proved that genes are divisible but before uh, 1940 we just considered like genes are beads on a string and uh, these are not uh, divisible in nature okay and the frequency of recombination between the two genes is affected by so we all know that uh, the recombination will be affected by linkage right and it is also affected by a synapsis and then d synapsis and the location of the gene with respect to the centromere yeah the genes which are located in the centromere or around the centromere and the genes located in the telomere right they will be mostly linked in nature and the distance between the two genes directly affects the recombination and the translocation of the genes okay all of these actually there might be no correct uh, option but all of these they generally affect the uh, recombination okay recombination frequency and we all know that the energy currency of the cell is your atp okay so uh, where does the atp production takes place which organelle in which organelle you see the production of atp yeah it is in the mitochondria right okay uh, so the statement is national bureau for animal genetic resources it is located at it's not kamal it is at karnal right this statement is true nbagr we uh, call it as nbagr uh, it is located at the karnal and then the uh, national bureau for fish genetic resources it is not at chennai it is located at lucknow okay so this is a wrong statement okay nbfgr is located at lucknow and uh, nb 
FGR is at Lucknow and AGR is at your Karna. So where is NBPGR, uh, National Bureau for Plant Genetic Resources? Any idea? Uh, National Bureau for Plant Genetic Resources. It is located at New Delhi, okay? So here it is given. So NBPGR, it is uh, located at New Delhi and uh, animal genetic resources at Karnal, Haryana and fish genetic resources, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. And we know that uh, soil survey and land use planning. This bureau is located at the Nagpur. Okay. So with this, we have um, completed the genetics portion and entering into the plant breeding portion. So this type of question, this question is asked every time in the JRF. Okay, so you need not to make any mistake in this question. So we all know that uh, um, how would you form a three-way cross hybrid? So three-way cross hybrid is nothing but the product of single cross hybrid into again an inbred, right? So we can say that single cross hybrid is an inbred one into inbred two, and then crossing this inbred with another inbred, right? So this is your inbred A into inbred B, close bracket into the inbred C, right? So we can call it as this a single cross hybrid then cross with your another inbred. Whereas in case of your modified single cross uh, hybrid, it is nothing but A and A dash are your sister lines, okay? So first we will cross between the inbreds of sister lines. And then if you cross uh, that with an inbred B or inbred 2, we can call it as your modified single cross hybrid. And then top cross hybrid, we generally call it as inbred into open pollinated variety or OPV. So if this is your top cross hybrid, double top cross hybrid. So the name itself says that there are uh, two inbreds involved. And then after crossing the two inbreds, the resultant plant is crossed with the open pollinated variety. So who is the scientist uh, that proposed the top cross hybrid? Anyone? Top cross hybrid was given by? Any idea? Yeah, it was Davis, okay. Top cross hybrid was given by Davis. Okay. So the next question states that a tall green gram plant was crossed with a dark plant. All the f were of intermediate height. So this is a key uh, point in the question. When a tall plant is crossed with a dark plant, they observed that the f were with the intermediate height. And when they self the f the F2 plants produced a different phenotypic class for the plant height. And their ratio is 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. Okay. So it is stating that tall plant was crossed with a dwarf plant. And F1, they observed an intermediate height between these two. Okay. So this is a situation where the trait is governed by quantitative genes. Okay. So... When the trait is gone by quantitative genes, I hope you read the example of uh, Nielsen Hille, where he uh, crossed the red flower with the white flower, right? And then he uh, obtained with this ratio, 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1. So this is the condition where the trait is gone by quantitative trait, quantitative genes. Okay. So... And the question is, how many genes are actually controlling the plant height? So if you carefully observe, in case of a quantitative genes, 2n plus 1 is a formula to obtain the phenotypic classes. So here, there are five phenotypic classes, right? So if there are five phenotypic classes, where here n is uh, the number of genes. Right, so if you substitute 2, remember the formula, 2n plus 1 is a formula to calculate the phenotypic classes. So if you substitute 2, you can get 5 phenotypic classes. So the number of genes is 2. You can go back and check the example of Nielsen Hille, where he performed 
right you can see there are two genes right and the two genes it eventually gave rise to five, five different phenotypic classes okay so for example if they gave you uh, seven different phenotypic classes then you can say it is governed by three genes okay and the next uh, question is in the reciprocal recurrent selection the two populations developed can be used as a synthetic variety right so it can be used as synthetic variety we all know and in reciprocal recurrent selection the gca of both the population is improved simultaneously is the statement too right in the reciprocal recurrent selection right now because not only gca in reciprocal recurrent selection will be simultaneously improving the gca and sca of both the populations okay so if you are eventually improving our gca you can uh, release the reciprocal recurrent selection population as a synthetic variety okay so if you are improving the gca you can also release it as a synthetic variety so for the estimation of mid parent heterosis which we also call it as your average heterosis the genotypes that are included in the trial uh, the genotypes that are included are so if you want to calculate mid parent heterosis so let us consider a is one parent b is one parent you cross them you obtain the f1 so if you want to calculate average or mid parent heterosis you need to take the value of f1 you need to take the value of a and b the average value so you need to have the f1 hybrid and both the parents okay and the next question the single cross hybrids can be used for a variety of purposes such as so from single cross hybrid so what can you do with the help of single cross hybrid you can develop a three way cross hybrid right we saw that when the single cross hybrid product it has been um, what do you crossed with inbred you can eventually develop the three way cross hybrid but the single cross hybrid it can't be used to develop the composite variety right you can't develop the composite variety but when you cross one single cross hybrid with other single cross hybrid you can develop the double cross hybrids okay and then you can also predict the performance of the double cross hybrids with the help of the single cross hybrids okay with the help of the uh, value of different single cross hybrids you can predict the performance of the double cross hybrids and then back cross generation it is not at all feasible so only you can develop the three way cross hybrid you can develop the double cross hybrid and then you can develop the uh, or predict the performance of the double cross hybrid right and coming to next question so we all know that uh, cleistogamy is a condition where the flowers do not open at all right the flowers won't open at all and then dichogamy is a condition where our male and female flowers the maturation time differs right differential maturation it is in case of time okay and then protogyny the name itself indicates that the uh, carpel or, or gynecium or pistil it matures way before the stamen matures and then androgyny the stamen matures first way before the female part matures okay so cleistogamy is a condition where the flower does not open at all dichogamy um, difference in the flowering time of our male and female flowers so protogyny so which is nothing but our gynecium or carpel or pistil it matures first androgyny where the androecium it matures first when compared to the female reproductive part and then coming to the different chronological steps in the uh, development of your hybrid so if you want to develop your um, hybrid so first we need to develop the inbred 
right if you want an hybrid to form you need to cross two inbreds right so first we need to develop the inbred so this is the first step we need to go with and then after developing the inbred you need to morphologically evaluate them okay so which is the uh, good one and which is the bad one based on the agromorphological characters so this will be your first step this will be your second step and then after this you need to test for their combining ability. So if you want to develop for hybrid, so which combining ability would you uh, assess for? Anyone? If you want to develop an uh, hybrid, so which combining ability you will be uh, seeing for which combining ability? Right, it is your SCA. So you need to test for the combining ability. After that, you need to evaluate the obtained hybrid with the check. And if all the criteria is fulfilled, you will go for the seed multiplication, okay? So first is your hybrid or inbred development, followed by the morphological evaluation, and then the combining ability has been tested, and the formed hybrid is uh, compared with your check. And at last, you will go for seed multiplication programs. Whereas in this type of question, so the heterosis cannot be fixed. So here it is important that which of the following cannot fix the heterosis. So we all know that if heterosis is, uh, can be fixed through apomixis and heterosis is fixed through the balanced lethal system and even through the F1 hybrid, right? But whenever um, you see that um, in which of the following conditions you can't fix the heterosis synthetic variety with the development of synthetic variety you can't fix the heterosis right and you can also fix the heterosis through vegetative propagation so you can't fix the heterosis through synthetic variety and you also know that heterosis is only seen in the f1 hybrid okay but in the subsequent generations, you can't see the heterosis. F2 in F2, you can't see the heterosis. Heterosis is confined only to the F1 generation. So development of an F1 hybrid is okay, but after that, you can't maintain the heterosis, okay? So you need to know this. And what are the chronological steps in the development of genotype and then it releases as a crop variety. Uh, so for this, first you need to uh, develop a genotype by making different uh, types of crosses. After developing that, you need to perform the preliminary yield trial. After uh, the preliminary yield trial, you need to go for multi-location trial over all the nation, right? And after going for multi-location trials, you need to identify that particular variety. And after that, it is been notified by your uh, central or state releasing committees. Okay. So first you need to develop the genotype followed by the preliminary yield trials and then followed by multi-location yield trials. And after that, you will be identifying the variety. And at last, the notification has been done for those varieties. Okay. So with this, we uh, completed both the genetics and plant breeding paper discussion of 2021 JRF paper. If you guys have um, any types of doubts, you can uh, ask. Any queries or any questions from your side? Okay, if you don't have anything, thank you all for attending. I hope that uh, you gain everything. Or if you don't, um, or if you did not get anything, you can ask or you can also message me. You can put it in the group, okay? Thank you all for attending this session.